Hello and welcome to Dr. Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at shapes and molecules. And this is part three where we're going to be looking at the lone pairs, charges and more complex shapes. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to use electron pair repulsion theory to predict the shape and angle of a molecule, included charges and lone pairs. And we should also be able to draw the shape of molecules that contain lone pairs of electrons and also charges and these tend to be slightly more complex shapes. Okay so let's look at lone pairs and shape and we're going to look at the examples of methane, ammonia and water. Let's start with methane which is CH4. So about the carbon atom we've got four electrons in the outer shell and we've got four bonds to the hydrogen, which means we've got eight electrons in total. Divide by two gives us four pairs of electrons, and of these we've got four bonding pairs and zero lone pairs of electrons. Now let's look at the example of ammonia. So ammonia, the central atom, is nitrogen. We've got five electrons in the outer shell, three which are bonded, giving us a total of eight electrons. And if we to look at this, this means that three are bonding pairs of electrons, and we've got one lone pair of electrons. And we'll see what effect that has in a minute. And the final example we're going to look at is water. So we've got oxygen, which has got six electrons in its outer shell. Two hydrogens covalently bonded, giving us a total of eight electrons. Divide by two gives us four pairs of electrons, two bonding, and two are lone pairs. Our methane then has four bond pairs and zero lone pairs. So once again we've got a tetrahedral shape with bond angles of 109.5 degrees. And again we draw our molecule as we've done previously like so. Ammonia this time then has got three bond pairs and one lone pair. What this means is the shape of the molecule is based still on a tetrahedral shape. And we get a mark for saying it's based on a tetrahedral in an AQ exam. But the actual shape of the bonds is now trigonal pyramidal. Because we've also got a lone pair of electrons... The lone pair repels the bond pairs, greater than the bond pairs repel each other, and therefore the bond angles between the bonding pairs of electrons is reduced and goes down by 2.5 degrees per lone pair. What that means is that this bond angle between the nitrogen and the hydrogens is no longer 109.5 but is now 107 degrees. And we can draw this molecule this time with our nitrogen in the centre, hydrogen coming out towards us, bond to hydrogen, and going away from us, a bond to hydrogen. And we describe our lone pairs there in an orbital above the nitrogen, like so. Our final example then with water has two bond pairs and two lone pairs. And so our shape again is based on a tetrahedral, but this time our shape we describe as being either bent or V-shaped. So that being described by the shape that the hydrogen to the oxygen makes. 
Again, this time we now have two lone pairs of electrons, so the lone pair lone pair repulsion is greater than the lone pair bond pair, which is greater than the bond pair bond pair. So our bond angle then has decreased, and because we've got two lone pairs, it drops by 2.5 degrees. And so our bond angle, which was 109.5 degrees, is now approximately 104.5 degrees. We can draw this molecule simply with the oxygen and the hydrogen in plane. And strictly speaking, our lone pairs of electrons then would need to be coming out towards us and away from us. Let's have a look at some of these charged examples then. So this time we're going to look at NH4+, so nitrogen, which has got five electrons in the outer shell, four hydrogen bonds, and because we've got a positive charge, we're going to take one away from our total electron count, giving us eight electrons, giving us four bond pairs. H3O+, plus, so we have here oxygen, with six electrons in its outer shell, three bonds to hydrogen, and we have a positive charge, meaning we take one electron away from our count, giving us eight. This time we have divide by two, gives us four pairs of electrons, so we have three bond pairs and one lone pair. And the final one, BF4 minus, so boron, there's three electrons that's out of shell, four bonds to the fluorine, and a negative charge, meaning we add one to our electron count, giving us a total of eight electrons. So these, both of these, or all three of these examples, have got four pairs of electrons. The NH4 plus and BF4 minus are both tetrahedral while the H3O plus is trigonal pyramidal, but also based on a tetrahedron like we saw in the last examples. Now we're going to look at the trigonal based pyramid and T-shaped shapes, which are based on five pairs of electron systems. And the first one we're going to do here is PCl4, so phosphorus is in group five here, four electrons to the chlorine, a negative charge gives us a plus one. So we have ten electron pairs, of which four of them are bond pairs of electrons, and one of them is a lone pair of electrons. With the sulfur trichloride, we've got sulfur, which is in group six, six electrons in the outer shell, three bonds to chlorine, one negative charge, giving us a total, again, of ten electron pairs. This time three of them bond pairs and two of them lone pairs. And we'll now go and have a look at what shapes these make. PCL4 then is based on a trigonal based pyramid here with the phosphorus in the centre. We have out in the plane, we have up, both of these being chlorine and chlorine coming towards us, a chlorine, and going away, another chlorine. And below and in the plane we have our lone pairs of electrons, and then our bond angles are slightly different. This here was 90 degrees, and is now reduced to around about 88 degrees. We can assume a drop in bond angle of about two and a half per lone pair and these ones here again push together slightly although probably still around the phosphorus still around about 120 degrees. Our sulfur trichloride then has still got the five pairs of electrons but this time based on the trigonal bipyramid but actually we've got T-shaped and here we can see the T-shape the bond angles are reduced slightly. Again, we can assume these to be reduced to about 84 degrees 
85 degrees because of the two lone pairs and we simply draw here in the plane our sulphur with the chlorines, chlorines and chlorines. Our final two examples then are based on six pairs of electron systems and we'll look at sulphur pentafluoride first. So we have sulphur which is in group six, six electrons in its outer shell, five electrons from the bonds to fluorine and we got a negative charge to which we add one to our count giving us a total of 12 electrons in the system of which we have five bond pairs and one lone pair and with xenon tetrafluoride we have eight electrons around the xenon we have four electrons due to the bonding to the fluorine atoms giving us a total of 12 electron pairs of these four are bond pairs and two are lone pairs electrons We'll go and look at the shapes now. So our xenon pentafluoride is based on the octahedral shape, but it's actually a square-based pyramid. And you can see our lone pair of electrons sitting underneath, reducing all of our bond angles here down to, again, about 2.5 degrees per lone pair. So we're at 87.5 degrees. And we can draw our molecule here, sulfur in the middle with coming towards us, one of our fluorines away from us, a fluorine coming towards us, away from us, and going up. And then underneath we have, again, our lone pair of electrons. Our final example here then, xenon tetrafluoride, which is octahedral base, but actually we describe this one as square planar, and this time the lone pairs sit above and below the xenon, and what that means is that we have all of the fluorine atoms there surrounding it in the plane. Now this is important because the two sets of lone pairs actually cancel each other out. So this time there's no reduction in bond angle and all of our bond angles are 90 degrees. And we can draw here our xenon in the middle, then going away with our dashed line, towards us with the wedge, towards us with the wedge, and away from us are the fluorine atoms and they are around the plane. And above and below the xenon there, if I was in an exam, I'd draw my lone pair of electrons in its orbital. So just to recap, the lone pairs reduce the angles, and that tends to be 2.5 degrees per lone pair, and change the shape of the overall molecule. The charges affect the number of electrons in the outer shell and if we've got a positive charge that goes down by one if we've got a negative charge we increase the count of the electrons by one okay thanks for watching i'll see you next time